Peter, I'm just kind of curious, what has surprised you about the conversations you've had in the last three months with, with, with people about AI, whether it's politicians or fellow MIT, MITers or business people, you know, maybe some things that you thought that you would agree on and maybe some things you thought you would disagree on that didn't happen. I think what surprised me is how much ChatGPT and its follow-ons have surprised the creators of ChatGPT. The emergent properties were not intuitively obvious when it was being built, right? That is fascinating. You imagine as a coder, right? And I've been a computer coder all my life, not recently in the last decade, but you know, I was there coding in hexadecimal on, uh, on, on 6502 microprocessors in the early days. These computers would do what you told them to do uh, because it was very much hardwired if A, do, do, do this, if B, do this. But that's not how these, you know, these neural nets are working, and especially not how these large language models are working. Um, they're exhibiting exhibiting properties that were like, huh, interesting. Where did that come from? And that's surprising. What's also surprising me and surprising others is what's coming next. That uh, there's a lot of a lot of improvement coming, and it's not linear. It is continuing to be exponential. Um, and so I just met this one company uh, that I'm meeting with the, the founders tomorrow because I'm so blown away by their technology that looks to be a hundred or a thousand fold more efficient on many different levels than uh, than OpenAI's GPT-4. So, wow, what does that mean? And then being told by another friend, huh, well, actually, there's stuff that's going to be even blow that out of the water. So the speed is incredible. Um, I think what surprised me as well is how this isn't front and center conversation uh, where it needs to be uh, in the boardroom. Um, you know, I'm on stages around the world and I'm like, you know, wake up people. You have to understand that this is an extraordinary time uh, and the tools and how you think about this and how do you prepare for it. and how you reinvent your your business. Um, so, you know, this is what I spend a lot of my time uh, thinking through. Uh, so anyway, a lot of those, a lot of that's surprising me. I mean, you know, the, the White House obviously, you know, summoned the leaders there. I think they just came up with an agreement. You know, the Senate had obviously, you know, uh, Sam there and a few people talking about it. You know, all, a lot of the corporations are talking about it, but in your mind, they're not, they're not really engaging or seeing how fast and how accelerating this and how disruptive this would be? Yeah, I think this needs to be an ever present uh, conversation uh, of you know, increasing percentage of one's time because the impact is disproportionate to everything else. Uh, talk about not only the elections, but the global economy, right? Um, there is whenever we have a revolution and this will be a revolution a revolution economic revolution a societal revolution a workforce revolution an intellectual revolution uh, it generates turbulent flow um, and then it settles out into a new capability we saw this with every the industrial revolution uh, and we've seen this with the early computer revolution. We've seen it over and over again. And the challenge is that, or the advantage of previous revolutions are that they took place over uh, centuries or decades or years versus months. And our systems of governance uh, and we humans want stability. Uh, you know, humans like waking up in the morning and knowing that the world was exactly the way it was when they went to sleep last night. No matter how bad the world was, we don't like, uh, we don't like change because uh, you have no idea whether it's going to be positive or negative for you. And this is going to be an impulse, right? A, a high uh, force per unit time change uh, that is going to shake people. And we could promise everybody, listen, it's going to be amazing. Let me paint for you where it's going, right? I know that you're not going to be, you know, we're demonetizing everything, 
but your healthcare is going to be free and your education is going to be free and the healthcare and education is going to be a thousand times better than what you had before. And we're going to see, uh, you know, energy is going to be a hundred times cheaper and all of it. You can paint the most glorious picture of the future, but tomorrow when there's disruption in your, in your job, in your company, in your city, in your country, you can't see that future. And so this is, you know, I'm, I am the person where the glass is not half full, the glass is overflowing, but I can understand uh, how this is going to make people feel in the future. For me, a lot of the work that I'm doing right now, you know, I mentor uh, 360 uh, entrepreneurs and CEOs at my Abundance 360 program. And my job every year, we hold it in March in, in LA, is to say, this is what just happened in the past year. Let me contextualize what just happened. And let me show you where things are going for the next two to three years and sort of give you sort of a roadmap ahead. Because if we have a roadmap, if we understand what's coming, we have a chance to to uh, get ready for it. You know, I started running this uh, Abundance 360 program uh, 11 years ago and committed to running it for 25 years because I said, I'm going to mentor and support these CEOs um, between now and through the singularity, right? And I can tell you that it's becoming harder and harder for me to really uh, keep up. I am by bringing amazing people together, but so much is happening uh, during the course of a year. And the time horizon, the predictable time horizon of what is likely to hit in, in you know, it used to be I could, I had a good view of where things were going to be in 10 years. Um, and definitely five. And now, you know, three to five is getting kind of shaky. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal, and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.